So it's uh, day one of Spinzilla week 2015. And while spinners all over the world usually stay up until midnight on the first morning, the first day, and get started spinning, I, I can't do that. I'm of that age that it is so much easier for me to get up early then stay up late. So this is what I'm doing. I'm up really early and still in my pajamas to do a spinning in cowgirl boots for you. So let's uh, get them on. Now I really do spin better in boots. And that's just because I'm used to it. Most of the year my feet are too darn cold. I'm very cold natured. And my feet are just too cold to be wandering around barefoot all willy nilly. And I spend most of my life in heavy boots for warmth. So, of course, I do most of my spinning in boots. And this may look a little silly, and I don't care. You know why? Because it's really early in the morning. And I haven't had enough of this yet. But let's get started. As you can see, I have an empty bobbin, and this is what I'm going to work on. I have uh, about a pound of this, so I'm sure I won't get it all spun for spits. I'm sure that this will keep me plenty busy. And... I'm going to spin it what I call semi-worsted. Now, as you can tell, it's a it's a combed top, and it's supposed to be spun, or it's intended to be spun worsted. It's been intended to be fed in like this, and keeping the fibers lined up. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to spin it semi-worsted, or semi-woolen. Yeah, and I'm going to spin it over the fold, like that. And here's my leader. I don't often get to start a new bobbin for y'all, not on camera anyway. Let's see. Here's my break. That adjusted. Yeah, and we're off. So what am I going to talk about today? Oh, that's right. This is Spinzilla. And Spinzilla was as an event created to keep spinning alive, to introduce it to his, well, to basically get spinners to spin and cough up $10. And then all the money goes to education. It all goes into teaching new people to spin, usually children people, which I support. And also to get spinners to start spinning a lot, hopefully in public, hopefully at spin-ins and get-togethers. And it's about keeping the craft alive. It's about showing people the old way, the pre-industrial way of making something, of making yarn. Now, most people, of course, don't spin. And I can tell from the reaction that I get when I spin in public that most people have never seen spinning done but our language at least the English language is full of all of these terms back from when spinning must have been so much more common we wouldn't all have these words and these phrases um, they're like artifacts from a previous age that are still you know bopping around and in the words that we say like the old spinster, or I have that spinster aunt. Now, you may have a spinster aunt, but chances are she's never spun an inch of yarn in her life. So where did that phrase come from? Well, for what I had to look this up, but from what I could tell, uh, people started using the term spinster around about the 1400s. But by the 1600s, it was in written language. It was actually a legal term that uh, was used in documents, in England at least, to describe unmar unmarried women, women who had never been married, not widows or the occasional woman that managed to get her marriage annulled or dissolved and you know survived the whole process you know uh, a spinster was at the time any any female that had never been married why because uh, if you were an unmarried female no children or man to take care of chances are you spent your time spinning 
You knew how to spin. You are a spinster. Okay. Well, right about the 1700s, it had become a pejorative. It had become an insult. It had become something that you called women who... Let me just do that. It had become something that you called women who were had never been married and were long really past the age of anybody wanting to marry that old bitty over there. And it usually implied that the woman who had never been married was kind of fussy and picky and, you know, she just, she can't be pleased. There's not a man out there that will make her happy because she's, you know, got really high standards. Today we use it, any old woman that had never been married, any older bachelorette. What else? Oh, of course, there's always the, um, to spin a yarn, or I'm going to tell a tale, I'm spinning, t I'm spinning tales. I'm spinning yarns. Oh, that old, you know, that old geezer over there. He's over there with his buddies yarning. Of course, it's got nothing to do with yarn. He's over there telling a story. Where sometimes when you're spinning a tale, or spinning an old yarn, you're telling a story, and usually... Usually it means that you're making it up as you go. You're telling a story or uh, you're exaggerating or maybe you're just flat out lying. So why would they call, why would they use this process uh, as a metaphor for making up a story? Um, I've, I've read that because women would get together and spin in spinning groups, and there was no Netflix, you know, and there was no audio books, and uh, spinning can become a little routine, especially if you have to if you have to do it and don't do it for fun. So to keep each other entertained, they would tell each other stories. Now that might be true, and it might not. It does sound pretty realistic, but I've never seen any, you know, any proof of it. Or it could just be from the act of creation. Just tell a story, to make a story up. For some people, it was very similar to taking, you know, a little ball of fluff, a little ball of fiber, and turning it into that. Hmm. Get that wound back on the bobbin. All right. Now, oh, uh, what about being of good moral fiber? You ever heard somebody describe that? Or a woman of no moral fiber, which usually means that, you know, says uh, a little, says a little frisky with a gentleman. Why would you describe someone's character as fiber? Sometimes, I mean, I've heard it said, like, such and such is going to threaten the moral fiber of our society. So apparently not just individuals, but the society as a whole has this moral fiber. Well, fiber is something that you use to create yarn. And the idea of having good moral fiber, quality fiber, now, if you're a knitter, crocheter, weaver, then you know if you start with a low quality fiber, you're going to end up with a low quality finished product, no matter how skilled you are. If you, if you don't have good materials, you can't really make something of good quality. So it must have been that when people were handling fiber all the time, and the idea of quality fiber versus low quality fiber was a part of their lives and a decision that they had to make and you could judge so and so sweater by the quality of fiber that was used to make it. And they started comparing that to the way people live their lives. You know, the moral judgments and decisions and the, and how they conducted themselves in society. Now I got one more for you and that would be the phrase Tapestry of lies. 
that's something that authors like to use, and it comes up in like the title of books. It seems like like every seventh or eighth uh, mystery has that phrase, the tapestry of lies. Now that's a weaving metaphor, that if you've got something you've woven and you've woven it so tightly that you can't see through it, or you can't make out the individual strands of yarn used to make it, then they that has been used as a metaphor for you can't tell where one lie starts and the other stops. You can't even, there's so many lies, this person has told us so many lies that you can't even see your way through it. I think that's another phrase that must have come from when there were people in our society that were working with yarn and fiber and creating garments. Um, but today, today for a lot of people, they're just words. And they're words that aren't associated in their minds with their original meanings. Because most people don't spin or play with yarn. And that's where Spinzilla comes from. I'm circling back to the beginning of my little, my little lecture here. Spinzilla is all about reminding people of an old skill. And there we go. I think I'm going to do a few of these little short spinning and cowgirl boots throughout the Spinzilla week. Because, of course, I'm going to spin every evening for Spinzilla. And I'll keep the camera handy. And I'll see how many yarns I can tell this week. Till next time.